today I'm reviewing the Skin Aqua Tone Up UV Essence. And really quick, I just want to say I purchased all these products with my own money. I'll never waste your time with sponsored ads or videos. So if you want to help support the channel, check out nobsbeauty.com, check out my Patreon community, or click on the links below. Okay, so a lot of you wanted me to review this one. And I think recently they just came out with another edition. They've got this version. They've got a mint version. I think they just came out with something else. And a companion product, if you guys want me to review, is their milk. So, and yes, this packaging was designed to be unicorn-esque, beautiful, Instagram-worthy. So, okay, they call us a lavender-colored face and body sun milk or sun essence that helps to brighten skin, create a translucent glow. While cutting off both UV and UVB rays, can also used as be used as a makeup base and is easily removed with soap. So, my first criteria, packaging, obviously, this packaging is beautiful. And the mint packaging is beautiful. They did a very nice job. It is very Instagram-worthy. So, I hope they didn't spend more money designing the packaging than they did the formula, though. But whatever. You never know. Um, in terms of denatured or drying types of alcohol, um, it is alcohol is the second ingredient. Although you don't notice it because the texture of this one feels hydrating. Uh, it also contains polyvinyl alcohol, which is film forming. Then in terms of fragrance, uh, it has a kind of a fruityish floral scent to it. It's the very last ingredient. It's not super strong, but it does take a little bit of time to dissipate. And I get migraines triggered by very, very strong fragrance. And I did not get any migraines with this one. So that does say something to it. So, but if you're very sensitive, keep that in mind. Uh, the manufacturing location for this one is Japan, so no issues with that. So SPF, the SPF of this one is 50 plus, so it indicates very good protection, so no real issues with that. We get to the UVA protection factor, and this one has a PA with four pluses after it, which indicates excellent UVA protection. Typically, a PA with four pluses indicates a PPD of 16 or higher. PPD is persistent pigment darkening. The higher the number you get, the better UVA protection you get. And UVA rays are important because they're the rays that age us. So I've seen pictures of truck drivers where their one fit side of their face is against the window. You can see more age damage and wrinkles and fine lines than the other side. It's pretty dramatic. So it's important to protect yourself from UVA rays. Um, PPD 16 is, we don't really know the actual number, and I could not find the actual number, but 16 or higher is pretty good. If you're very concerned about it, there's some really high PPD sunscreens. The Norman UV Cure is one. Uh, the Ryman's P20 is a good one as well. Uh, Bioderma has some high ones as well. Okay, then let's talk about the filters, and then we'll get to the white cast, because they mentioned the tone-up thing, and I don't necessarily know that for all people it's perfect. But Okay, so for organic filters, we've got Oxinate, which is a clear, oil-soluble, cosmetically elegant liquid that is most commonly used. Chemical sunscreen absorbs UVB rays with a peak protection at 310 nanometers. Then we've got Uvenol A+, which is a UVA ray absorber. Then we've got, uh, let's see, Tinsorb S, which is a very photostable filter that absorbs both UVB and UVA rays, which is amazing because the U.S. has not been approved, so we don't have that one, but it's a great filter. And then for inorganic filters, we've got Titanium Dioxide, which is a UVA and UVB ray blocker. It gives nice broad spectrum coverage and is very stable. It's also very safe, regular size titanium dioxide. So we've got a combination of four filters, organic, inorganic, UVB, UVA, all over the spectrum. So this one's pretty good. Unlike some of those other sunscreens that only use two filters, it's very hard to get really good protection with only two filters. This one has a four. Okay, in terms of the white cast. So personally, I think this is going to depend on your personal skin tone. Let me give it a little bigger. There we go. Because I've, personally, I didn't find that this has a terrible cast. However, if you have a deeper skin tone, I think it will probably be more noticeable. Uh, because it the, does smooth into skin. And for me, 
I don't really notice much of a cast. It does make my skin look a little bit brighter. However, for other people with deeper skin tones, they noticed more of a cast. So if you're very pale, it might not be an issue, but if you have a deeper skin tone, it could become more of an issue. And it's probably from that titanium dioxide in there, as well as some of the colorants that they added. So um, some people called it a bit of a gray cast. So there we go. Okay, texture of it. It's got a nice lotiony texture. However, it does take a while to absorb, and it kind of sets to a bit of a shiny finish that is non-tacky once it absorbs. Slightly shiny, but not terribly so. And then it is also water and sweat resistant, so that's great if you're outside or exercising or things like that, but still reapply it. Uh, ease of use, so you can use this on the face, you can use this on the body, the size of the bottle allows for that. There's a lot of products that say they're for face and body, but the tube size is very tiny. Um, and then they also mention it smooths out skin and can be used as a makeup primer, which it does work pretty well that way. Um, and then definitely be diligent about how much you're applying because using the recommended amount is a bit more challenging because it does take a while to fully absorb. So very important to use the full amount. You know, on the camera, I just noticed it looks more of a white cast than it does, like, up close. So, anyway. Okay, antioxidants and beneficial ingredients in this one. So, we've got sodium hyaluronate. I don't love seeing that in sunscreens because I just feel like it increases the likelihood that it's going to pill with something you apply beforehand. Um, we've got magnesium ascorbyl phosphate, or MAP. It's a vitamin C derivative that has been known for brightening skin. Although not a ton of research on it, but it's thought to brighten skin. We've got passion flower extract, which is a skin conditioning ingredient. Then we've got plum, which is also skin conditioning. And then we've got Rosa Roxburghi, which is an extract and a source of vitamin C, vitamin E, and superoxide dismutase. So not a super long beneficial ingredient list, but we've got a few nice ones in there. It's nice to see a vitamin C derivative and uh, that Rosa, so I gave them a point for that. In terms of acneogenic ingredients in this one, we've got a few. We've got butylene glycol, triethylamine, and then colorant CI73360, which is apparently very comedogenic. I think they could have done without that ingredient, but whatever. In terms of animal testing, uh, they're not cruelty-free. There we go. Performance, so this one lasts all day without looking greasy towards the end of the day. It does a good job providing protection from burning and skin damaging rays. Water and sweat resistant. Not the most easy to reapply, though. Um, I found reapplying this wasn't super enjoyable just because uh, it's a little lotion-y. It's got some of those colorants in there, which it takes a while to absorb. So if you're somebody that you're going to have to reapply, this is not the funnest one. It's nice to reapply at the beginning of the day, but if you have to apply more than one or two layers, it's not the most enjoyable for that. But it does remove pretty easily at the end of the day. So Then in terms of the price, so this is the full size, which is 80 milliliters, 2.8 ounces, and it retails for about $15, which in my opinion makes it an affordable face and body lotion. It's not crazy priced but it's still a nice option and I really enjoy this one. And if you guys want me to do the milk, I'll definitely do that as well. Um, yeah, so it's got some fragrance in there, but I didn't find it overwhelming. And I, I really enjoyed testing this one out through the winter because despite some of the alcohol, I did find it to be oddly moisturizing. So, okay, with a 15 being a perfect score, I gave this one a 10. So I'm interested in hearing from you guys. If you had a chance to try this or the mint green version or the new version they're coming out with, definitely leave a comment. Love hearing from you guys and stay tuned for more tomorrow. Thank you so much.